All right, guys, what we have here is Tessman multimeter and AC voltage detector, the TM510 from Tessman. Just a digital multimeter and your AC voltage tester, non-contact voltage tester, electrical tester. Most everybody has one of those. The meter, probably going to be more for homeowner use. Um, checking sockets, outlets, uh, switches around the house, things like that. Um, we're going to test it on an outdoor HVAC system, a heat pump. Uh, compare it to maybe a field piece with accuracy. But they reached out and asked me if I'd do a video. And I said, why not? Got these for free. This retails for about 10 or $11 and this about 25 maybe 20 to 25 dollars on amazon there'll be links to these in the description but uh we're going to check them out i have already opened these this is not necessarily an unboxing it does come with a manual it's a little thick but that's because it's in several different languages it's about 16 pages just goes through the basic operations um same thing with the non-contact voltage tester small manual in there but everybody knows how to use one of these i hope fairly simple so to turn it on just hold the button comes on has a small lit screen display shows your voltage range setting there ac and then percentage so does have a flashlight hold that button down and you get a little flashlight there uh, maybe you're looking at an electrical panel I mean you wouldn't really be using this too much in an electrical panel I would think you'd want a good meter for that but <clears throat> if you're in a poorly lit area you need to see into your socket light switch <clears throat> maybe back in a wall or something it gives you a little little light to see what you're reaching for turn that light back off and you can change the range with one tap of this button so it's 70 to a thousand and then now we're 12 to a thousand i don't know why they don't just make that 12 to 70 because you're kind of checking for low voltage um seems to me like it would only need one range 12 to a thousand so does have a, a choice but a little redundant on that but we'll test that here in a minute and we'll see how well it works hold the button turn it off meter little bag nothing fancy little padding on it comes with a set of leads and this is the meter itself I've already put a magnet on the back of it with a little glue, a little crazy glue. Um, just seems like that's something maybe they would have added um, more, I guess, well, not necessarily around the house because um, not everything in the house is made out of metal, but uh, if you're working uh, on electrical stuff or something, you got a metal panel, you can stick that to. So I've done that. It does have a flashlight on the back. Don't really understand that either because you know, you're going to be it's either going to be in your hand it's going to be laying down or with the magnet that i've added it's going to be stuck to something so don't really have a need for a light but it's it's there um so we'll turn it on it's auto ranging so you're not going to set any functions let's turn the light on see if you can see that better right there so you see your little arrow bouncing back and forth it's auto ranging um, you've got another button over here, which is a hold feature. And it also, if you hold it down, will be a non-contact voltage tester as well. Um, right in this area, put it to whatever you're checking. And uh, we're going to test all that and see how well that works. Hold it back down. Goes back to auto ranging. It's going to check your volts AC, your volts DC. Um, ohms and continuity, basically, are your prime only functions really um still amp clamp on it or uh, you're not gonna be able to check capacitors with this or anything like that flame sensors 
you know just a basic little handy meter and uh, we're gonna see how accurate it is all right guys we're at an outdoor unit heat pump we're gonna start with this got it set for 70,000 or 70 to a thousand volts AC let's see how it does here so it picks up that let's try the other one so it picks that one up we'll go up here to our contactor and here to our common side and it does pick up voltage and our percentage is reading 99% right there go down here to the bottom of the contactor so we go over here on that side of the contactor so it picks up when you get close to that contactor it starts starts alerting you pretty quick so we'll see how it does on low voltage so I'm going to switch that to our 12 volt setting we're close to that contactor she goes off so it does pick up low voltage right there on our thermostat wire so if we wanted to go check thermostat wires uh, maybe a limit or something that has 24 volts running through it it seems to do that very well let's go down here on the board it's not really there we go so i'm at my stake on for that r wire where it connects to this defrost board and it's picking up low voltage so i mean for ten dollars probably not a bad tool i mean you pay 16 or 17 to 20 dollars for the flukes and the other cheaper ones this isn't that bad i mean it gets up close to this contactor it goes off pretty good so go up here where we're where our common connects to our capacitor yep so i'd say that works well i'd say for ten dollars that's not a bad deal let's see how this meter does though I guess you can see why the uh, magnet was put on there. Another, yeah. Pretty good addition. Holds it in place. Not too bad. So, let's turn it on. And first thing we're going to do is check our, like I said, it auto ranges. Let me turn that light on. Maybe it helps a little bit so it's going to auto range we're going to compare it to a fluke probably not a fair comparison but for accuracy that's the main goal here so it auto ranges now i'm doing this with one hand because i'm holding this camera with the other one so we're going to go in here to the contactor and we're reading 244.8 volts auto ranges to ac voltage now we'll try to go down here and see what we can get between common and 24 and we get 26.5 volts there so 244 oh, i lost contact here there we go so 26.5 and 244.8 roughly. So let's see how that compares with the fluke. Two, 
245.2 so we're about four tenths off it's not too bad I mean for what you're going to be using it for around the house this is gonna not be bad and we'll check our low voltage measurement and we're at 226.6 right there 26.4 26.6 so that's not really all that bad uh, between low and high voltage pretty pretty accurate so next thing I want to do is we're going to ohm out this contactor and see how accurate it is with ohming out a contactor so let's see what the what the fluke will give us when we ohm out the contactor and like I said I'm trying to do this with with one hand so bear with me put that on the right setting it might help us there so we've got 12.8 ohms with the fluke on this contactor, 12.8. So let's see how this does with continuity and ohms. So be, like I said, I'm using one hand and I'm trying to, well, I think I can manage this. So let's see what this tells me the contactor ohms out at. Be about 1.3, So the auto ranging on this, it would be nice if we could just set it directly to ohms, but for twenty dollars, what are you going to expect, right? maybe it's lacking in that function so I'm not quite confident in that when it comes to checking ohms I mean, at least with these other meters you can set a a range and dial in what you're looking at but this thing here is just not Point zero zero six point one two one three point zero one two it bounces around a lot you gotta do your math on that checking your ohms but uh it's telling me it's giving me like a point five now if you do your math point four definitely not uh unless you stay on it too long maybe you've got to get that first reading quick and because it auto ranges maybe it We'll go straight to the other function there. Yeah, not impressed with the ohms function on this thing. Especially when compared to that. But, uh, checking voltage. Like I said, it's not, not bad. 244.8, that's what it was reading a while ago. So, I'm guessing, let's try this non-contact voltage function on it real quick. And, uh, just hold that down. And there you go. So, yeah. Not a bad non-contact voltage tester. I'm sure it's not going to do anything with 24 volts there. But with this contactor, it's not that bad. So... I guess for around the house, checking things, $20, getting a whole lot of money. But if you're in heating and air and you're an electrician, <laughs> this is definitely this or the field piece meters, better quality meters designed for what you're actually doing. I wouldn't even keep that on the truck as a, as a backup. But around the house, yeah, you want to check your outlets, sockets, your light switches, things like that. I mean, you find little meters all over the place for $15, $20.
um, that don't have a digital, at least, I don't know. It's pretty sturdy, it's thick. Yeah, the leads aren't bad, they're not stiff. So, yeah, I'd say if you're gonna have one of the, something around the house, just for just general checking things around the house, is my light bulb bad or is my socket bad? Uh, do I have an outlet that's not working, a light switch that's not working? You know, little things like that, tinkering around the house. It's definitely worth the $20, but I wouldn't use this on my job. So, anyway, guys, appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, leave your comments, what you think about this. Um, that non-contact voltage tester, not bad, you know, especially as a backup or a spare. I think I have a fluke that I have, but uh, it seems to be pretty pretty accurate. Ten dollars for that so have your opinions you've heard mine um, I'd use this around the house or something check batteries test batteries something along those lines switches light outlets but not at work